All right, so let's talk about how you'd actually do it with con metric conversion calculations. So this is where we take the metric system and use our knowledge of it to convert from one quantity to another quantity. So for this, you absolutely need to have your metric conversion reference sheet with you and in front of you, as in your list of what all the metric prefixes mean and things like that, because that will help a lot. So with this, uh, let's begin. One liter equals a certain number of deciliters. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, you know, since giving you some information here, um, a simple one-step calculation, because one of these is a base unit. Okay, this is what we call a base unit. It's the unit that it's all based on. It can have kilo or deci or micro or whatever liters, but it's all some version of liters. This is a base unit right here. So if you see the base unit in either the answer or the question, you know it's going to only be a quick one-step calculation. So how does that look? Well... Here's the thing, if you've memorized that deci is one tenth, then a deciliter is a tenth of a liter, so a liter should be ten of these. And that's true, but here's the thing, if someone just on their exam puts ten and thinks they're done, they get absolutely zero credit, even if the answer's right. Because this is all about your work. Showing understanding of a process for simple things like this shows that a person has mastered what they need to know for more complex calculations. Because yes, you can look this up on Google, but there are much more complex calculations that cannot be so easily looked up. And for that, it becomes necessary to understand the process of how to run a conversion. So this process, it, it tells you right here it's a one-step, but the process I'm going to show you is good for one-step, two-step, multi-step conversions, and will serve you no matter what. So the formal thing I'm about to show you is dimensional analysis because dimensions refer to units, and so we're gonna look at units as our primary way of understanding this. So it shows you something that looks like this for conversions. Let's talk about where all this comes from and why it looks like this, why there's a 10 here, why we have it like a fraction, things like that. Big deal here is if you're gonna convert from one unit to another, there are some steps you need to follow every time, and the first step you do, the first thing you do when converting from one thing to another is you write down the given, i.e. this thing that you start with, one liter. You write that down before you do anything else. After that, you set up a conversion factor. Conversion factor looks like a fraction. And that fraction has something on top and something on bottom. And when you're done with this conversion factor, you're gonna to need to wind up with an answer in deciliters. This is the standard abbreviation for deciliters, D for deci, L for liters. So how is this going to go? Well, we need to understand something. Why does this look like this? Why do we have a fraction with things on top, things on bottom? Now, again, this is called a conversion factor. And where do we come up with this conversion factor? It comes from the fact that units are like numbers. Notice we start with liter, but it, it disappears and gets replaced by deciliter here. We're treating these as different units. Units are like numbers. If you have the number 5, for example, and you multiply it by 1 over 5, 5 on top cancels 5 on bottom, and it just becomes 1, like this is left over. So if you have 5 times z over 5, then it becomes just z, because they cancel. Likewise, units do a similar thing. If instead of the number 5, you have a unit, like liter, and if we times it by maybe x over liters, you're just gonna want a liter cancel liter to just leave x. Or if this was a one, you'd have one left over or whatever it is. The point is, like numbers, units cancel. And that's gonna be really important. This is what we need to see from students doing this. We need to see students show us they understand how to cancel numbers or cancel units. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put liter on bottom because liter needs to cancel with liter because it's not part of the final answer. Deciliter needs to be part of the final answer, so that goes on top. This is the abbreviation for deciliter. So this shows liter cancel liter to leave deciliter as the answer, and you'll notice um, this has no numbers in it. This is because step one is set up your, your right, your given, and step two is set up your units. 
It is only at the end that you finally plug numbers in. So do not even think about putting numbers in here until you set up units and make sure they cancel, which these do. Leader cancel leader, you have deciliters. And then finally, the actual numbers themselves. So what we do here is we say that, all right, so we, we well, actually, before I do that, where do we come up with this? There's a 10 and a 1. Why do we have that? The reason is because you have to go look at your reference chart. Look now. Okay, deci means one-tenth of something. That means the number 10 is involved. Okay, so consider this now. The way you know to put the 10 up here by deciliter is because the number, the big number, needs to go next to the smaller unit. A deciliter is one-tenth of a liter. A liter is, well, a liter. This is smaller than a liter, so this is the smaller unit. The bigger number goes next to the smaller unit. Remember that. And then you just put an automatic one on the other unit. What that does is tells you how you're going to do your math in order to get the answer. Because this is a fraction. You multiply by whatever's on top, you divide by whatever's on bottom. So you take this one, multiply by 10, divide it by one to give an answer of 10. And of course, box your answer. Right, so look at what we just did. We wrote the given. We set up the units to make sure that leader cancels leader to give deciliter as your answer. We then plugged in numbers, putting the big number next to the small unit, and then we did our math. This times whatever's on top divided by whatever's on bottom. And that's it. Now, a word about rounding. It says conversion factors to the metric system have infinite sig figs and do not affect rounding. That means when you convert from one um, metric unit to another metric unit, as in liter to deciliter. I'm aware that this is a one sig fig number, and this is also theoretically one sig fig, but we treat it as infinite significant figures. In other words, this does not determine how you round your final answer. See this one significant figure right here? We make sure there's one significant figure here, and that's it. Okay? When you're converting between two metric units, don't worry about the number in terms of rounding. It doesn't affect how you round. Only, the, only what you start with. All right, so having mentioned that, let's look at another example and get this out of the way. Again, we're aware that it's very easy to Google that 5.64 grams is equal to 0 0.00564 kilograms. If someone writes that, they're getting zero credit even though it's correct because they need to show us that they know how to cancel units and go through the conversion process. Now. Right now, you should be able to tell me what's the first thing you do when it comes to solving this. If you said the correct thing, you said write the given. So that I shall do. 5.64 grams. Yes, the standard abbreviation is acceptable. Set a conversion factor. Make sure it is equal to, we want kilograms for our answer. So kilograms it will be. How do we know, by the way, that I only need one conversion factor? Remember, when one or more of the units is a base unit, a simple one-step conversion is going to work. Notice, grams is a base unit. Liter is a base unit. That's why we only need one conversion here. Gram is a base unit. That's why we only need one conversion here. So, okay. That said, let's look at this. We need to figure out what our next thing is. Question to you, the viewers. Do I put numbers here first or units? Answer now. If you're correct, you said units. Don't even think about putting numbers in there until you got your units right. So the question is, okay, what units do you put there? Well, we need kilogram in our answer, so kilogram goes in here somewhere. We need gram in our answer, so gram goes somewhere. So remember, if you don't want gram in your answer, gram has got to cancel. So the question is, do we put gram on bottom in order to cancel with this, or gram on top? Answer now. If you're correct, you said gram on bottom. What, therefore, should we put up here as a unit? At least a kilogram. This way, indeed, gram cancels gram, kilogram is left over in the answer. All right, that is step one. We put our given. Step two, we set up our units. Step three, we set up the numbers in here that will allow us to do the actual conversion. All right, check your chart. Or check your chart. What's kilo mean? All right, you, your chart said 1,000. So we got to put the number 1,000 here. Does the number, does the big number go next to the small unit or the bigger unit? Answer now. Again, does the number go next to the bigger or smaller unit? OK, 
Okay, hopefully you said it goes next to the small unit. So that means the number 1,000 goes next to gram, which is, this is 1,000 grams, this is 1 gram, so this is smaller. And an automatic 1 goes next to the other units. When you do that, you're going to wind up with moving the decimal a few places. You do your calculator, it'll spit out the answer of that. 0 0.00564 grams. I'll just erase this because it's already there. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said grams, I meant kilograms. But same thing, just typed out. Now, bear in mind, this is not acceptable for a final answer, even though it's correct. Don't forget, for tiny numbers like this, you got to use scientific notation, which I see is not actually written here. Let's make sure we get that actually written there. 5.64 times 10 to the negative third kilograms. Box your answer. Now, last thing to check on. How many significant figures does this have? One or infinity? All right, hopefully you said infinity because they're both metric. So here, three sig figs, infinite sig figs. You should have three sig figs. And look, we do. One, two, three. So it's numerated correctly. We're good. So 